Hey guys, my name is Scott from Chegg Tutors. I typically tutor subjects such as biology, chemistry, psychology, sociology, and statistics. And today we're actually going to be talking about homeostasis. Now, homeostasis is kind of a correlation between psychology topics as well as biology topics. Now, what exactly is homeostasis? Homeostasis is the regulation of our internal environment so that certain reactions uh, in our body can operate at maximum efficiency. Okay. Now, in terms of the actual regulation with homeostasis, uh, certain glands of our body participate in homeostasis, um, muscles participate in homeostasis, and the, more specifically, the hypothalamus, a certain part of our brain, also plays a role in homeostasis as well. Now, let's talk a little bit more about um, uh, the idea of negative feedback inhibition. Now, negative feedback inhibition is a really important uh, concept to talk about, especially when referring to homeostasis, because it's one of the main ways that our body maintains our internal environment. Now, endocrine glands uh, tend to oversecrete their home hormones. Typically, some aspect of their effect on the target tissue will inhibit this, uh, this secretion. And this is exactly the example of negative feedback inhibition. A critical aspect of negative feedback in endocrine cells is that hormones act to bring um, to bring the body back to normal, not to cause abnormalities. So for example, on the diagram that I've shown you all, insulin, a hormone that lowers blood glucose, would be expected to be released when blood glucose is high. If the body had low blood glucose, um, if the body had low blood, 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 uh, blood glucose, insulin would be expected to be low. Notice that um, the control point of the feedback and the behavior of the effector not is in the, is in the behavior of the effector, not in the um, the ca the concentration of the hormone in this case. Okay, now don't really worry too much about the nitty gritty in terms of ne negative feedback and inhibition. What's really important to understand is that, like I was saying, our body works to maintain the internal environment, and it doesn't work to maintain at, to to cause abnormalities. So your body is working to constantly make sure that everything is in working order, and it's making sure that your body isn't uh, that certain glands are over secreting certain things and uh, certain hormones are in, aren't in high concentration. Maybe if I give us um, an example, it'll probably be a little bit better to understand. So let's um, let's look at an air conditioner for uh, the, an air conditioner is a good analogy in this case. So you might set your air conditioner um, to 78 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer. Now, if your house were uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, would you really expect your air conditioner to be on or off? case well you would more or less uh, you'd expect it to be off in this case right because it's not um, uh, it should only come on when your house warms up past 78 degrees Fahrenheit if your air conditioner had simply stayed on and caused your house to get so cold you would say that it's broken okay so again we're talking about that whole abnormality versus main, maintaining the internal environment your it would be considered an abnormality if your air conditioner were on even if your house was well below 78 degrees Fahrenheit okay so this critical limit, the set point that our bodies and that we have that we had this analogy here, the 78 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a basically a critical point with everything in our body. If it ever gets past that point, our body tells the glands or the muscles that's causing that certain abnormality, say, we're done. Okay, we don't need any more at this point. So Homeostasis uh, plays a really big role in to definitely in terms of the endocrine glands in our, uh, in our body and definitely in terms of uh, the hormones in our body. Uh, homeostasis plays a really big role in terms of tropic hormones, blood chemistry hormones, osmolarity, blood glucose, calcium regulation, stress hormones, metabolic rate, as well as reproduction and development. Um, for example, we if we have osmo, if we're considering osmolarity, take for example, you're in the desert for a really long time, you haven't had a lot to drink, the uh, concentration of your blood is going to increase because you haven't had water to dilute that concentration. So your body is going to work to uh, make sure that it conserves water and that you uh, urinate less. Things along those lines. Um, things in terms of uh, calcium regulation. If you have a really high blood calcium, uh, then your uh, then certain hormones might be released in order to uh, make sure that your bones reabsorb that calcium. Homeostasis, like I said, plays a really big, really big role in terms of maintaining our internal environment, but it also plays a big role in terms of how our body uh, 
um, adjust to the external environment as well. An example of this could be seen if uh, it's very, very cold outside, then your uh, body is going to send certain, is going to release certain hormones that is going to uh, result in blood vessels constricting. So, uh, so that blood is going to be conserved to the inner parts of your body and won't be um, lost to your appendages. Um, Another example is activating the shivering response in which muscles are going to contract a lot and cause energy, uh, it cause, and that contracting causes a release of energy so that your body temperature is maintained. The same thing can be said about if it's very, very hot outside. Uh, and this, if it's very, very hot outside, then your uh, blood vessels are going to vasodilate, and that means that they're going to become, they're going to expand and release the energy, uh, re release the heat that they have out into the environment, um, so on and so forth. Okay, so. Homeostasis, like I said, plays a very big role in terms of the internal, uh, the internal environment of our bodies, as well as how it interacts with the external environment of the of the surroundings. Okay. Now, if you have any questions about this video tutorial, then feel free to send me a message. If you have any uh, other questions in terms of biology, chemistry, psychology, sociology, or statistics, then feel free to send me a message at my personal check page. You can see I've linked it to the uh, whiteboard below. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this video tutorial. Have a great day, guys.